I'm spending six months inside HMP Belmarsh, Britain's most notorious high security prison. It's locked up the country's most dangerous convicts, from the great train robber Ronnie Biggs to Ian Huntley oh. and the killers of Stephen Lawrence. No bed, no toilet. I don't think I could do an hour in here without going down a twist. But what happens here has remained virtually unknown. Cameras have never been granted full access to this jail until now. So far, I've seen how Belmarsh deals with its volatile mix of inmates. From high profile prisoners, Tommy Robinson has been sentenced to nine weeks, and gangs. This is Belmarsh. To common criminals. At this precise time, I'm not guilty. I've learned that being locked up here can affect anyone. You seem very emotional now. Yeah. Now I want to see what it takes to survive within these walls. There's a lot to it than just getting up and walking out of a door. I've been given unprecedented access to spend the night in a cell in Belmarsh. I'm thinking about all the different people that have been through this cell. I'll meet the prison's only transgender inmate. Oh my God, I'm the odd one out here. Come across a new type of terrorist. I will attack ISIS members. And I'll meet the staff who must step in. How care we, bro? To deal with the jail's most vulnerable and unpredictable prisoners. Would you kill someone? If I have to, yeah, definitely. Why not? Welcome to Belmarsh. Built in 1991, Belmarsh was the UK's first supermax jail. Designed to take in prisoners considered a threat to national security. Besides its very own dog unit and a bomb-proof tunnel linking it to Woodage Crown Court, Belmarsh has one thing that truly sets it apart from other prisons. It has the only jail within a jail in England and Wales. Thank you, thank you. This is the High Security Unit, or HSU, that's held some of the world's most dangerous terrorists. And this place has been home to people like Abu Hamza and the killers of Lee Rigby. But Belmarsh is having to deal with a new kind of prisoner. Just through those gates are anti-Islamic and anti-ISIS inmates who can't be released into the general population for fear of attacks and reprisals. One of those is Darren Osborne, the murderer who drove his van into a crowd outside Finsbury Park Mosque in 2017. <laughs> Also here is Aidan James, the only Brit charged with terror offences for fighting against ISIS in Syria. It's Monday morning, and HSU inmates are returning to their cells after exercise, including Aidan James in the red T-shirt. Without warning, James violently attacks another prisoner with a pool cue. As a consequence, he is taken from the HSU to one of the cells in the main prison segregation unit, designed to hold Belmarsh's most disruptive convicts. James, come to the door so I can speak to you. He has a history of self-harm, suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder, and has just cut himself with some plastic cutlery. I can see, I can see you've hurt yourself. You're hitting your cheek, and I can see your arms damaged as well. Are you going to self-harm anymore? All I'm saying is be patient, try not to do anything until we can get the doctor to come down and speak to you, OK? The concern now is that Aidan James's self-harming could escalate before medics reach him. The rest of Belmarsh's convicts are nearly all held across its four main house blocks, each one capable of taking over 200 men. As head of safety, it's Adrian Knight's job to know where every inmate is at all times. Every prisoner on this house block is on this board. So, so how many are there? It's Today, there. we've got 197. So it's 13 cat among this lot. 
Category A prisoners are the country's most dangerous and violent inmates. They make up around 10% of Belmarsh's population. The majority are sent here from the Old Bailey and Woolwich Crown Court. Men like Usman Khan, the London Bridge attacker who once spent time on this very wing for a previous terror plot. So, Adrian, if you were to look on this particular spur... So there's probably around 70 prisoners on that spur right now. There's uh, five cut agents, around 12 gang members, and they're mixed in with burglars, robbers. Is Belmarsh different to every other prison in the UK? Belmarsh is unique. We'll take prisoners that are very high profile. We'll take the highest escape risk prisoners, prisoners in for multiple murders. There's not one prisoner that we won't take. One in five of the convicts here is serving time for murder. But there's a killer on the third floor of House Block 3 who's not what you might expect. Every morning, get myself looking as best I can in here. You've got to make sure that before the door opens, you've got everything done. Eyeliner, mascara, uh, foundation, because you don't want people seeing you without makeup looking horrible. Claire Derbyshire is Belmarsh's only transgender inmate. Born Christopher, she's 39 and has been living as a woman since her early 20s. Claire, you hi. nice to meet you. You too. So if I sit down? Yeah, of course you can. You're the only woman prisoner in Belmarsh, aren't you? Yes. It, at first, I found that very daunting. It was kind of like, oh, my God, I'm the odd one out here. What are the other inmates going to be like? How are they going to treat me as a trans person? Can you give me some indication of some of the things that they say to you? Just stuff like um, queer, tranny. You get some saying, oh, show us your tits. Were you worried that you might be sexually abused here? Um, there was always that in the back of my mind, what could happen. You know, the officers can't always be by your side, so I was always on edge. So how long have you been here? I've been here three years, eight months now. As a pre-op trans prisoner, Claire wasn't given the choice of a women's jail. And when she arrived here, she rarely left her cell. It's Belmarsh. It's intimidating, scary. You expect the worst. She now has a job as a cleaner, which means that she can come out when most other inmates are locked up. Thank you. I've learned the best times for me to be out and about, the best times for me not to be out and about. So far, Claire's managed to avoid any trouble. Well, I consider myself to have been very lucky. Back in the segregation unit, Aidan James is struggling and continuing to cut himself with a broken spoon. You have got something that you've done the cuts with on your arm and your face, and I'm not happy to come in at the moment, mate, and deal with it. Um, I'm speaking to the healthcare, right, and they're doing their utmost to contact Dr. Daly, OK? All, all I'm saying is be patient, try not to do anything. If you start to feel dizzy, right, because of any loss of blood, sit down. With James still self-harming, Staff must move him to one of the constant watch cells in the prison's healthcare unit, run by clinical psychiatrist Dr. Rachel Daly. Because they want to bring up Aidan now. now. Are they so? No. That's, that's why I need to get this sorted first. Is there anyone we can take off constant jobs? Um, I'm going to move him into. There are only three constant watch cells in healthcare, and right now they're all full. That is unworkable. There's not even anyone due to be discharged today, is there? No. Dr. Daly sends a nurse to the segregation unit to assess James's injuries. Why do you have to do it? Your face and your cheek also. I've got, I've got PTSD. The addition for me to say. So is that the reason why you are cutting yourself? <laughs> Healthcare scramble to free up one of the cells. Hello. OK, right, the time is 14.44. James is a volatile Category A inmate. To move him, the prison has to call upon a team of specially trained officers in full riot gear. He's got a broken spoon in his cell and we're not fully sure that he's going to comply the instructions to come out of the cell. He's in the seg now. They've got a team ready to do a plan removal on him now and bring him up here. Where the space is coming from. We're having to move some people around. Okay. 
As the minutes tick by, James suddenly starts to smash his head against his cell wall. Okay, we'll do. Finally, healthcare free up a cell. Right. Yes. Officers get the go ahead. Teams go in, we place him into cuffs. Okay. But have no idea how James will react. In Belmarsh's segregation unit, six specially trained officers are preparing to move dangerous prisoner Aidan James, who has been cutting himself and smashing his head against his cell wall. OK, James, you're going to move me on to healthcare. Are you going to walk out cell compliant? No, I don't want to fight you, no. They have riot shields and protective clothing, as James seriously assaulted another convict earlier today. And he's now made an improvised weapon from broken cutlery. Is to go to the back of the cell and put your hands on your head. Can you just put that weapon, put that on the floor for me, please? Right, hands on your head. This is the team. Okay. I want you to walk out forward to me. Come into your cell, turn to your right. Keep coming. Turn to the right. Aidan James suffers from PTSD after fighting against ISIS in Syria. Charged with terror offences, he's been in Belmarsh for 15 months awaiting trial. Right now, staff must get him to a constant watch cell in the healthcare unit. Here, he can be monitored around the clock. James is well known to Dr. Daly, who's been treating him in Belmarsh. What are you doing to yourself? Look at your face. Mr. James, what is wrong? You need another officer, Tony. No, no, you need another officer. Mr. James, this is unusual. I thought you were doing OK. Things got worse. What happened? I ended up having a fight on this girl. So who did you fight with? Someone disrespected me about my PTSD, so I smashed the pool cube around the desk. That's yeah. not great. Yeah. Okay. Now, are you taking your meds, darling? Yeah, I'm taking them. You're very stressed. You'll stay here until I think you're doing okay. Cam, right down now. James is 28, and the only British man charged for fighting against ISIS. Well, I think he was in the pub in Liverpool drunk and he thinks it's a good idea to go to Syria and fight with the Kurds, right? So got some out to Syria fighting with the Kurds. Really? Totally traumatised by it. So we treated the trauma. He had lots of psychology and medication for the trauma. Belmarsh has the largest healthcare unit of any prison in the UK, able to house up to 30 patients. Can you just give me the idea of the spectrum yes. that comes yes. through healthcare? Well, we'll have some people coming up with rare neurological conditions. We had a young man last week with multiple sclerosis who joined us up here. And then there's, of course, the trauma, the fights on the house block, broken noses, broken jaws, broken arms. So a full range like you'd expect in any general population. So are you frightened? But Dr. Daly's not running your average surgery. Would you, would you kill someone? If I have to, yeah, definitely. Why not? Providing medical care for other inmates, including serial rapists and murderers, many with mental health issues, poses extreme challenges. Security is on another level here. With six times more staff per inmate than the rest of the jail. You're dealing with some really violent, unpredictable human beings. They all come with a story. But we have to remove ourselves from what they've done to their health care and see them as another individual. And this is the NHS where we care for everyone. Besides its complex mix of difficult prisoners, Belmarsh deals with inmates of all ages. The youngest here is 18, and the oldest, 93 years old. Some of these men have spent most of their adult lives behind bars. And so have some of the staff. Oh, my Lord! Why can't I go anywhere without having to see you? Go whatever prison I work in, you're always there. And I promise I'll always stand by you, Jenny. Oh, you're the only one who calls me Jenny as well. Deputy Governor Jenny Louie joined the prison service 32 years ago. She's been in Belmarsh for the last nine years. Mr Keane has known me when I was living young. 
I want to see paint on the walls, not on your clothing. 53-year-old William Keane has been in prison 23 times and is currently serving six years for burglary. It's 30 years you've known me. We were teenagers. <laughs> 30 years. You've yeah. both known each other yeah, in, inside yeah. the prison system. The majority of all of these here are going to get dumped out of prison, back onto the same thing and keep coming back all the time. That's all that's going to happen. This happened year in, year out. Not the right. majority. You're the only person I've no, seen. I'll, I'll always be back. It's just because we got this thing going on. Well, I know you'll marry me one day. She still won't turn around and give in to my get, charms. Let's get upstairs. Go. <laughs> still Go. won't give nice in to me. Thank you. So do you see that a lot? You do see people coming back, and I think if you can achieve some of those elements like housing, employment, if you can achieve that, that is so much more to ensure that somebody won't come back inside. For some, Belmarsh is a revolving door. For others, it's a more permanent home. All right, come in. How are we? Yeah. So you two, you seem quite, uh, what's the Cheers. word? Yes. Yeah. Cellmates Lee Sales and Patrick Malloy, both in for violent GBH offences, know what it takes to do time. Why not? I'm doing 21 years. Yeah. You do it. You will. You do. Your... No, I will do 16 at that. My parole, first parole, is 2028, and then if not, 33. My daughter, my daughter's 16 on Friday. They're in uh, Benidorm now. So does that not kill you, though, the fact yes. that you're here? Yes, it does. It does kill you, that. Yeah. We're hoping that you're going to help us with the parole, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is what it is, isn't it? I'm, right, doing, yeah. I'm doing tenure. Light work, though. It's like light work. work. Light work. <laughs> yeah. now, listen, the human body is learned to, it's built to adapt. You don't realise. We thought we that, didn't we? Until you actually get yourself in that situation, the body is actually stronger than what you think. You have to survive, don't you? Yeah. So, I mean, you have to. Like, uh, if you don't in here, they'll spot, but you'll become a victim, mate. Yeah, of course you would. Of course you would, yeah. You either fall apart or else you get beaten, one of the two. What, what don't kill you makes you stronger. And if you ain't strong in here, things happen. Someone who has had to adapt fast to life in Belmarsh is transgender prisoner Claire Derbyshire. Prison does harden you. You have no choice but to accept prison or it will eat you away. Claire arrived here in 2016 after her court case at the Old Bailey hit the headlines. My mum died in 2008. Um, and uh, I'd been looking after my dad ever since. He had MS, he was bed bound. He wanted to commit suicide, but couldn't do it on his own. And I helped him. Well, he decided he wanted to be suffocated. He said he, he, that would be easiest because at least then he could have a hand in it. He could hold the bag. Um, and I laid behind him and held the back of the bag. His um, breathing got quicker and quicker and then slower. And, um, and there was one last breath, and I knew he'd gone. Like all murderers, she received a life sentence. But the judge accepted Claire's plea that it was an act of mercy and gave her one of the lowest minimum terms in British legal history, just four years. I was going to commit suicide. I had no reason to live without my dad, but I couldn't do it. Something I still feel bad about, I should have gone with him. Like others convicted at the Old Bailey, Claire would have known she'd be coming to Belmarsh. Its reputation as a tough environment precedes it, and arriving here can be frightening. But when this is the last place you expect to end up, it must be especially daunting. <laughs> 100 miles away in a Category B prison, 20 inmates have broken out of their cells, causing a full-scale riot, with the footage shared online. 12 hours later, two of the main suspects are shipped to Belmarsh in distinctive E-list or escape list uniforms and move straight into the segregation unit, where one of them is already making himself heard. I want my food! 
Right, I offered you your food, and then you started giving it a big one, didn't you? Do you know what I mean? Oh, Showing your true colours now, aren't you? Listen to me. I'm taking your number. Can you take me number? I don't, I don't care about that. You're gonna speak me as an adult. You've taken my shit, bro. You had. See you later. Please get my food. Welcome to Belmars. <laughs> The other new arrival is 20-year-old Liam Waters. Right. You know where you are now? In the high security prison in the country? Right, so no. just tell me why you're here. Um, I'm here because of a security prison. Prison mutiny, that's what they call it. You're OK in the seg for now? I'm OK in the seg, right. I just don't know, I just don't know, because I don't know anything about you. You don't come across as someone that should be in the seg, but I've obviously got to go with what you're I'm being okay. told. No. Nice to meet you. They'll be on the e-list for a considerable time now while we work out um, what to do with them. Obviously, one's quite a young guy, that's why I still find it difficult in the prison. It'd be a big step up for him compared to what he's used to. As an escape list prisoner, Liam Waters is now considered high risk. He won't be allowed contact with the outside world and his every move will be monitored. Obviously, this is all new to me. Being shipped here is crazy. Balmas, ACAT, high security. I believe it's one of the most dangerous places to be in the whole of England, prison-wise. I know there's gangs here, there's terrorists here. All I've got to do really is pray. Pray that I um, get out of here quick as possible. When night falls in Belmarsh, the reality of life behind bars can hit newcomers hardest. Every year, over 4,000 inmates come through its gates. All new prisoners coming into Belmarsh are brought here to House Block 3 and into the First Night Centre. Each prisoner is allocated a cell, and contact with the outside world is now by appointment only. If you've got mum, dad, brother, sister, girlfriend, whoever mm. on here, get that handed in as quick as you can. Tyron Brooks has just been transferred from another prison. This will be the first night of what could be a five-year stretch here. This your first time in Belmarsh? Second time. Second time? Yeah. And how many other prisons have you spent time? A good few, over 10. 10? Yeah. I've been about. Why do they keep moving you? A whole host of things. You can have a fight, they get rid of you. Belmarsh has a, um, a reputation for being a tough prison. Does that not concern you? It's ruthless, it's vicious in there. All gangs, you know what I mean? A lot of the young fellas in there, they've got problems. What follows them from, 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 from the outside world? A lot of it's in people's heads. They smoke drugs, they get paranoid, he's coming for me, he's watching me. He's not. <laughs> mm. I used to be like that, but I'm grown up now. I'm nearly 30, you know what I mean? I've been coming to jail for 10 years, unfortunately. What's your advice to anyone coming to prison? But if you're first time, it's new, innit? Everything's new, the noise, the keys, is the smell. Keep yourself to yourself. Take it day by day. This is where prisoners get a taste of what's on Belmarsh's menu. I know people are going to moan about it, but I've been to some other places around the world and this is very nice. But that doesn't mean I'd want to eat it every day. Soon, the moment comes for inmates to go behind the door for the first time. Unaware of who they'll be sharing with and what crimes they may have committed. Cheers, gents, have a good evening. Every night, all 900 inmates are locked up for 14 hours. In the morning, bruv from 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. And tonight, I will be too. And while I can never know what it's truly like to be a prisoner here, I am about to spend a night in Belmarsh. I'm the first non-prisoner to be granted permission by the Ministry of Justice to spend the night in a UK prison cell. Like every inmate, I've been given what's called a first night pack. Let's see what we got in here. Body wash, 
gel. It's gonna come in. Someone's been very funny. Not a shampoo. That's gonna be very handy as well. Now, it's about 33 degrees inside this uh, cell. I know this is only for one night, but when that door closes, and I'm lucky I've got a cell to myself, a three-man cell, that is a totally different ball game because you are dealing with the pecking order, you are dealing with the politics of three individuals living, breathing in each other's farts, breathing in each other's bad breath, breathing in each other's smells when they go to the toilet. Locked in a 10 foot by 7 foot box, I'm struggling to sleep. Can you imagine the different people that have been through this cell? So a lot of people have made here. Contemplating what they did or didn't do. How they managed to find themselves here. How long they've been spending here. Plot revenge. And the regrets. That's hot. Three hours and still no sleep. A lot of conversations happening now. There's people shouting now, I can't make it what they're saying. You have to be mentally tough to be able to survive in a place like this. Not only physically tough, you'd have to be mentally tough. No matter how hard your night has been, at 8 a.m. sharp, Belmarsh comes to life. As soon as you're ready, unlock, please. Foundations to change, young Evans. 18 Beach. Well, you've got education, yeah? Morning. 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 What? I've had better nights than worse. <laughs> Happy days. Thank you. Safe, but I would be a liar if I said I wasn't relieved to be getting out. On every house block, 12 officers must try to smoothly manage the comings and goings of its volatile mix of prisoners. Mr Brito, why is he out? Well-behaved inmates have the right to be out of their cells for up to four hours a day to head to education, visits and workshops. Favourite term is if you've got like 70 kittens and they've all got their own box. Come on! No, you're not the camera. And then... Each kitten doesn't go in their box, it's chaos. This is exactly what this is, <laughs> absolute chaos. Alex Nerthen, who is in for GBH, was considered such a threat outside, the police told the public to keep away from him. But in here, even stepping out on the landing is a challenge. Walking out that door first thing in the morning on a wing, if you're gonna be honest, it is scary. You never know how that day is gonna go. Is it going to be you today? Your body language has always got to be on point. You never know how someone else is going to act. Are you going to look at someone, they're going to take it the wrong way and then automatically they're going to act on you? There's a lot to it than just getting up and walking out of a door. And you think Bill should be one of the jails that you'd be safe in, wouldn't you? High security, Nick. It's far from there. In a place like this, it's potential for violence, confrontation, every second of the day. It's always bubbling away. Fights happen daily, leaving staff battling to maintain control. In this footage captured on an officer's body camera, staff restrain a man caught fighting. As eight officers move him to the segregation unit, they're unaware that one of his enemies is waiting in a nearby shower block. Oh, 
anyone can become a target in here. It's three days since Liam Waters was transferred to Belmarsh after a riot in another prison. He's just been moved from the segregation unit onto House Block 3, where I spent the night. How different is Belmarsh? Very different. <laughs> it's not nice. I mean, at night time you hear a lot more shouting and stuff, and horrible place. Yeah, I'm just trying to keep my head down. And... There's more pressure here. Yeah, especially being dressed up in this. Nice, yeah. They're still treating you as an E-list prisoner. I get me fork and knife taken away from me at night time. <laughs> And my plate and my clothes, shoes. Do you know what's going to happen to you now? It's not. I don't have a say in what goes on here. For all I know, I could be staying there for my sentence. Belmarsh can be a tough place to survive. Like all jails, mental health issues here are on the rise. No, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know what you're doing to my head. Isolation bullying and drugs can all play their part and often lead to self-harm and sometimes suicide attempts. Pressures from outside the jail can push people to breaking point too. Last night, Alex Nertham was moved to a constant watch cell in healthcare. Having been told that his girlfriend was seeing someone else, he tried to hang himself. I had some news from someone about something with the missus, which turned out not to be true. I don't know, it just kind of all hit home, really. I ripped off a length of bed sheet, and then I woke up with them kind of off my neck and basically trying to put me in a recovery position because I went blue and stopped breathing. I thought it would be quick and easy. But it turned out it weren't meant to be. With healthcare once again full and many more prisoners waiting to come here, Dr. Daly and her team must quickly assess whether Northern remains a suicide risk. Mr. Norton, at this moment in time, out of 10, between zero, I'm going to kill myself, and 10, I'm having a party, where Three. are you? Three. I wouldn't want you to kill yourself. Yeah. We'll be doing everything to prevent it. So we need, we need to work out what's going on for you. So You're in prison, did. she might break up. What are we going to yeah. do about that? Oh, I don't know, I just have to deal with it, I suppose. I, I suppose so. you'll have to, yeah. yeah. So we need to have you in healthcare, working with us. We need to work your way into therapies. What's going to work for you? How am I going to cope? How am I going to work through issues, right? Simple stuff. Yeah? Yeah, I appreciate it. So we will sort out your meds and we will see you again later in the week. As long as Nerthen is deemed at risk of taking his own life, he'll remain in healthcare. When someone declares that they want to commit suicide, how do you stop them? How do you keep them alive? Well, I suppose we have to look at, are they truly suicidal? Is there an underlying mental health problem? Are they depressed? Are they psychotic? Are they in a crisis? In cases like Nerdon, they struggle with their relationships, like they struggle with everything else in life. Is it the job of healthcare to keep people alive? Yes, of course. Mm. And we want them to have hope. Because if you haven't got hope, how do you carry on the journey in life? For many prisoners, it's their relationships outside jail that keep them going. But for Claire Derbyshire, who served most of her sentence on the same wing, it's the close bonds that she's formed inside that help her get by. I've got a select group of people that are my friends, people that have been really good to me in here. I know they've got my back. They look out for me. And they have something for her on a very special day. Happy birthday, Claire. That's you. Oh, thank you. Her. Oh, wow. Big 4-0. From the guys on the land. To my bad bitch, happy birthday. <laughs> to my jail wifey for life. How important is that to you? It means a lot because it's just all these people care. It's lovely. Belmarsh has been good for me. I don't hear that very often. <sighs> no. But Claire could be facing a big change in her life. After nearly four years inside, she will soon find out if a parole panel will be allowing her to leave Belmarsh behind. I've been on this spur about two and a half years now. So it's, it has become my home. Weird.
updated slowly. Home for Aidan James remains the healthcare unit. He's reacting well to treatment for PTSD. But as a high-risk Cat A prisoner, he can only be unlocked when other prisoners are banged up and must be accompanied by two officers. You all right? Feeling up quite nicely. Yeah, it's getting yeah. better. Yeah. You need to behave. I'm always on my best behaviour. James is still awaiting trial on terror charges for fighting ISIS in Syria. What made you want to go and fight with the Kurds? Um, after the Manchester Arena attack was when, when I thought, right, I, I want to go and do something about it. I left everything. I left my family, my son, I left everything because I felt so strongly about fighting against ISIS. This is um, a British guy, Ollie Hawley, got killed when he was over there mm -hmm. with me. This is me in the middle. It's looking rather different. Yeah. Shaved head, Natash. Yeah. So you are with your AK, yeah? That's you again, is it? Yeah. How much fighting did you actually see? Quite a lot. Spent five months on the front line. Uh, liberated three villages. Yeah. Um, rescued thousands of people from, from death, basically. Mm -hmm. Daily, we were getting um, suicide vehicle attacks on us. But there were British people out there who joined ISIS? Yeah, there is, there was many. And there's British people... Being held. ...in this prison now who yeah. fought for yeah, ISIS? I know. How does that make you feel? Angry. But that's why they've got to keep me separated. There's no chance of me going on main house box. I'm not allowed simply because if I did, I will attack ISIS members. You will? Definitely. You're not anti-Islam, you were just anti... ISIS. Nothing against Islam whatsoever. But while he awaits trial, staff have little choice but to keep Aidan James in healthcare. He can't go back into the high security unit because he's attacked. He can't go into the main prison because there's a price on his head and his own admittance he will attack anyone that he thinks is in ISIS or associated to ISIS. So where do you put him? And he's just one individual amongst the 900 other prisoners here. It's 10 days since Belmarsh took in two prisoners accused of rioting in another jail. I'm just gonna be speaking to Waters up here. And they're happy that one of them, 20-year-old Liam Waters, is no longer a risk to their regime. Waters, you awake? Yeah. It's just turned the light on. Got some good news. No. How long have you been E-list for? No, your ages. It's been taken off of it. Right, which means that we'll get you some clothes that you can wear. Thank you. You can have a phone call to your mum because you didn't have your induction call when you came in. Brilliant news. All right, put this lot on. I'll wait for you. As soon as you're ready, we'll go down, OK? Wait, what? I got my phone on that? Yeah. Woo! Finally getting out of my costume. Not why. All right, close that on fit, mate. <sighs> As an E-lister, Liam's not been allowed to call home. Connecting. Until now. Hello, Mum, you all right? Hello. Finally. Oh, not yet. No, 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 not yet. Because um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need clothes and stuff. And my shoes. They give me size seven. Toes are cramped up in them. That's it. Time up. The police are still investigating the riot, and Liam has no idea how long he might be in Belmarsh. It must be quite daunting for someone of his age, 20 years old, in an area that he doesn't know, with people that he doesn't know. The young lads like him would try and keep an extra eye on them. Cheers, Andy. Give me a pair of flip-flops. These are size four, man. I'm size nine. <laughs> Liam might not have the right footwear, but at least staff are looking out for him. The relationship between prisoners and officers goes a long way, which is where a lot of people go wrong. They come in and it's sort of like, oh, they're the enemy. 
You reap what you sow. You're decent with them, they're decent with you. It makes prison life so much easier. Hair dye is banned here, as peroxide can be used to make explosives. But after nearly four years, staff have something for Claire. I have. They've found a Belmarsh-friendly variety. Mahogany. Claire, apparently you've been asking for this for some time. Oh, excellent. <laughs> oh, thank go you. Go easy. I will. You know, thank we don't want to go much. too dark. No. See you later. Thank you very much. Cheers. The hair dye has come at a big moment for Claire. As the parole panel are about to let her know if she'll be free to leave Belmarsh. The panel is satisfied that it's no longer necessary for the protection of the public that you be confined and therefore direct your release as per the proposed risk management plan and licence conditions. I can go smoke a bloody cigarette. I can... Oh, my God. It is amazing. But Claire has no friends, home or family to move in with. Nearly a third of the UK's jail leavers are homeless. And some commit crimes just to go back into prison and get a bed for the night. Claire wants to stay in a female hostel and it's the job of Belmarsh and probation to find one that will take her. They're going to be effectively judging me on if they think I'm woman enough. It's, um, it's a little bit nerve-wracking, you know, not knowing what's going to happen. For a lot of prisoners, leaving Belmarsh can be as big a moment as arriving. For some, it's a chance to celebrate. First two things I'm going to do, yeah? What's the first things you're going to do? First thing, straight away McDonald's. And McDonald's? The second thing is that I'm going to have a proper cigarette. For others, it's a transfer to another institution. A good trip. While for many, it's the hope of a fresh start. Where am I signing? Yeah. Behave your bloody self. There's a hotel, it gets zero stars. For some, it means stepping into the unknown. So, after four years of being in Belmarsh, Claire is finally being released. Can we come in? Do you have any idea where you're going to sleep tonight? No. No. No idea. That's all I'm asking for. Four walls and a roof. I feel let down by the system, actually. The female hostels have rejected Claire for being too male, and the male hostels for being too female. But she has to leave today. You are very nice. Take it easy, Claire. Right. See you later, Claire. Thank you. See ya. I wish her well, but she completely doesn't know where she's going. She's not going to a safe refuge as Belmarsh is, so. She might have a lot of issues once she leaves here. <sighs> You'll get your cash, valuable items. Right. We're also giving you a travel warrant to get to where you've got to go. Okay, thank Good you. Good luck. Do you think that life might be easier for you in here than on the outside? Yes, in as much as I've got a place to sleep, oh, day, food, to eat, all of that. I'll be starting from the ground upwards, um, which is daunting. But also, I got a chance to try and make something for my life. Wow. <laughs> if you've survived Belmarsh as a transgender person, you're pretty much prepared for most things. But for Belmarsh's 900 inmates, life inside goes on. For me, the last six months has confirmed Belmarsh's reputation as one of Britain's most notorious prisons. But it's high levels of security and the fact it will take inmates that no other prison can or will take makes it unique. 
I've also seen the other side of this prison that deals with vulnerable prisoners with complex health needs. But there are no easy journeys here for staff or for inmates, and anyone can become a victim here at any point. And while society remains so troubled and so violent, we will continue to rely on places like Belmarsh to deal with Britain's most demanding and dangerous prisoners.